Hey there, hello and welcome. It is Madeline here, and today we're talking about a topic that is very near and dear to my heart, and that is healing anxiety, right? Which is really at the crux of my life's work. So, healing anxiety versus treating anxiety, right? There's a common misconception in the world that anxiety, depression, those types of conditions need to be treated and I'll get into that in a minute but my belief and my position and that of my teachers right who are physicians and experts in this field also agree right that anxiety depression those types of emotional disturbances and tor turmoil need to be healed not treated so and as many of you know anxiety is near and dear to my heart because not all that long ago almost 10 years ago i was crippled by i was nearly crippled by anxiety and i know i promised my story and i'm going to share it with you not today you'll get pieces of it today but i'm thinking before christmas right so that's my goal is is before christmas but i was i was nearly crippled i was brought to my knees by anxiety and it took me years to climb out of that hell right and so now i've made it my life's work to help others climb out of that hell and hear me my dears it doesn't take years okay it doesn't take years but i'm going to get a very short amount of time okay if you are on the right track and the right track i will tell you up front is healing anxiety emotional turmoil depression whatever the case may be in that realm, not treating it. Okay, so what does that look like, right? So what does anxiety look like? So for me, I was, you know, I don't even have, you know, adequate words to describe what I felt like, but I was just, I was in a dark place, right? I was in a dark place. I didn't feel good, right? I didn't feel like myself. I didn't know what my, who myself was, and, and I didn't feel like myself. And I knew that I didn't feel good. And I didn't have words for it because I knew that I want that I wasn't happy, that I wanted to be happy, but that I should have reason to be happy, but I wasn't. I was I was miserable, and I had all these physical symptoms as well. And what I hear from my clients, prospective clients, people that I talk to on a regular basis is that they spend time in worry. And overwhelm right that's not like you have a, a passing thought or um, or a fleeting moment you spend time there right perhaps you spend so much time there that it becomes your state right which is one of the definitions of anxiety right what's the definition of anxiety and that is this feeling the state of dread right of dread or apprehension or like something bad is going to happen, or you're just waiting for something bad to happen, or you just feel bad because now that's become your baseline. And one of the, again, one of the things I hear, hey Lisa, good to see you, beautiful, glad you made it. One of the things I hear on a regular basis is, I just don't feel good, right? I just don't feel good, I don't want people to know. Right? I don't want people to know, right? Because it's a mental illness, right? It's considered, it may be considered a mental illness. I'm making air quotes for my friends on, my corporate friends on the line. My corporate friends are on the line as usual, right? I don't want people, I don't want to be found out. I don't want people to know. I remember feeling this way. I don't want people to know how sick I am. Can they see it on, can they see it on my face and in my being? Because you feel like I'm going to fall apart that things could fall apart at any given mo at any given point in time and as a result your world gets smaller right your world gets smaller because you don't feel well enough to engage in normal fun activities right and you don't want to be a downer on your friends right you don't want to be a downer on your friends your family your peeps wherever that may be for you so as a result you contract and your world gets smaller and that only fuels the negative state and the negative emotions, doesn't it? That's right. I've had clients, past clients tell me, who are thriving now, let me say they're thriving now, tell me, you know, I cry on the way to work. 
right? And cry on the way to work. I cry on my way home from work. What would happen if I drove my car off the road? That is some terrifying shit, isn't it? Yes. And so let's talk about what to do about that. Okay. So what's your story? Can you relate to any of that? And again, in the foreseeable future, I'm going to share the details of my story with you in hopes that, you know, you'll recognize parts of your story in it and it will inspire you to get the help that you need, right? And I'm hoping that you'll get that you'll be inspired to get the help that you need today. If any or all of this resonates with you. Okay. So what to do about it, right? So I'm not sure if I said already 40 million adults in the United States are dealing with, have been diagnosed with anxiety and it's most prevalent in older adults, right? So I don't know what that means, but I'm going to assume it's people that who are our age, although I'm getting younger every day. And I know if you're hanging out with me, you're getting younger every day um, as well. Right. But it's prevalent in kids, but I want to talk to our generation. Okay. It's prevalent in our generation and one in nine of those 40 million, well, one in nine Americans are taking medication for their anxiety and they are called anti. So they're taking anti-anxiety meds. Again, I'm making air quotes and antidepressants to treat their anxiety. This is a mistake. Okay. And I don't want, you know, if you're taking meds, my love, I'm not here to shame you. Okay. So I took tranquilizers in my day and I can certainly appreciate that, you know, maybe you just feel so bad that you want some relief, right? And you've turned to medication in hopes that you're going to get relief. That's not the point of this conversation. And hopefully you are getting some relief, but you know that you're only getting relief of your symptoms, right? I'm getting ahead of myself, not of the cause of your condition. Okay. So, and that's, and, and that's the moral of today's story is that anxiety and depression, I've not suffered from depression, but my teachers treat, heal depression with the same tools that they do anxiety and emotional distress. Okay. So, and that's not meds. It's not therapy. Although meds and therapy, talk therapy, cognitive therapy, I've done all of those. Okay. Can relieve the symptoms. Fortunately for me and my physician did prescribe antidepressants for me, but fortunately for me, I knew that that wasn't the way to go because sometimes that can result. That can be like a, a nasty hamster wheel that you never get off. Okay, because it works for a while and then it doesn't work and then you need to change your meds or up your meds and it's a vicious, it's a vicious cycle. Okay, although I can again appreciate that it can, it can provide you with some relief and what we, I want you to have relief, but what I want you, what I, my wish for you, my hope for you, my desire for you is to be healed from whatever is causing this anxiety, depression, emotional turmoil, whatever that means for you, whatever it is for me, whatever it is that is keeping you from living the joyful life that you desire, right? So again, Jesus said, I came so that you may live and so that you may live, have and enjoy life, right? So whatever you feel about Jesus, right? However you feel about Jesus, that is some good wisdom, isn't it? That's right. Yes, we are meant to have, live, and enjoy life. Whoever your higher power is, that's what they want. That's what they want for you. Even if it's you, your inner being, that's what they want for you. And if you are taking meds to heal your anxiety, depression, and or emotional turmoil, you probably know that that's not the answer. I knew, fortunately, when I was taking tranquilizers, they made my symptoms worse, so I was really quick to end that, to put that, to put a stop to that, and I, I, I get like I had, I filled the prescription for the antidepressants, but I didn't take them because I knew that, that wasn't the way to go. So, and I went the alternative route, right? So I went meditation, yoga, clean, clean living, I cleaned up my act, okay? 
and that took years, all right? That took years, but I got here. And then in recent years, right? So again, now it's my life's work, right? And I've been helping people do that, right? Clean up their act with um, alternative medicine, it's called, which is, you know, alternative practi practices like acupuncture, meditation, yoga, clean living, okay? All those are fabulous and critical to optimum health and well-being and vitality, right? Which is what I think we all aspire to have. And then I learned, right? Then I learned some really powerful tools, which I revealed a few lives ago, right? My magic pill, which is mental and emotional release. And I also recently learned EFT, which really blows everything up and really can uh, can create some massive shifts, right? So now, so which is which is how do you how do you deal with your anxiety? How do you heal your anxiety, depression, your emotional turmoil? First of all, the first step is to uncover the root cause of your anxiety, of your condition. Okay, you need to uncover the root cause. What is causing? you to feel this feeling of angst, apprehension, dread, worry, overwhelm, okay? It's not external factors, right? There will always be stressful external factors in our world, always, especially as world, the world just gets, you know, faster and faster with technology and all the ways that we can be connect, that we can connect and be connected to, right? There will always be stressors, but they don't have to stress you out. Right? They don't need to bring stress to you in your being. There is a way to be the calm in the storm, to keep your peace regardless of what's going on with you. And the first step is to uncover the root cause of the turbulence that is in your spirit. Right, And it's mental, it's emotional, and it's probably manifested as physical symptoms as well. And you can work on all those, that's what I did, right? I worked on all those physical, all those individual aspects and I got there eventually. But now I have a process where we can bang that shit out in a few, you know, in a few hours and then I'll help you integrate the changes into your life in a few weeks. But I'm getting ahead of myself, right? So we need to uncover the root cause of your anxiety, depression, emotional turmoil, okay? And that's usually negative emotions, and it's a combination of negative emotions and limiting beliefs. And that's uncovered in, if you were to work with someone like me, with me, or someone like me, we uncover that in a few hours, right? We uncover that in a few hours, and then we let go of it, of it right? And then there's a process to let go of the accumulated negative emotions, to let go of the accumulated fear, angst, limiting belief, limiting beliefs that are causing this negative condition in your state, okay? And then, right, so that's step number two is letting go of it, okay? Step number three is finding a mentor to help you with it, okay? So you can do it on your own, you're hard pressed to do it on your own at this depth and at this speed. Or you can take the long route, like I did, and it'll take you years. But most people don't have the, the strength and the discipline to stay on track, which is why it's important to find a mentor that can help you with this process, right? To help you because a mentor, right? So what did I hear that was brilliant? A brilliant analogy the other day, right? You can't. You can't see the outside of the house from the inside of the house, right? You can't see the uh, you can't see the shingles of the house from the inside of the house, right? So that's where a mentor is very instrumental in this process because they can see things you can't see, right? Because they're on the outside of they're on the outside looking in, and they can help bring that stuff out, right? So uncover help you uncover that root cause quickly, then let go of all the baggage that's around it, negative emotions, limiting beliefs. And then, and then once all that stuff is gone, then implement the positive change in your life so you can perpetuate the healing, okay? Not treating the symptoms, perpetuate the healing because the healing is, again, uncovering the root cause 
letting all that stuff go, letting it go from your physiology, right? It actually, it actually creates a fit, a shift in your physiology, in your neural pathways, in your emotions, in your mind, and in your being. And then, then from that place, you can successfully and relatively quickly implement positive change and you'll have the ability for that positive change to take hold and build the foundation for your happiness, joy, health, and fulfillment because all the crap has been gone. I hope that makes sense, okay? So just let me recap again, right? So we heal anxiety, not treat it, okay? If you've been treating it, that's okay. And I think if you have been, some of this resonates as true for you, right? That you need to heal it, not treat it, right? It doesn't need, you don't need to deal with it. Oh, and what I didn't mention is runs in the family, right? I hear that a lot. It runs in the family, this is the way it is. Runs in my family, right? Which explains why it's so prevalent in, in the world and in our country, but it doesn't have to be your story. Although that's your family story, it doesn't have to be your new story. Uncover the root cause, right? Let go of the emotional baggage around it, emotions, limiting beliefs, negative emotions and limiting beliefs, and then find a mentor that can help you get that, get that process done quickly, easily, and effortlessly. Again, because you can't see the shingles, can't see the outside of the house from the inside of the house. And then you can implement the positive change, right? Which is the complementary and alternative medicine, right? The meditation, the yoga, the clean living, the exercise, the clean and nutri nutritious food and proper mindset and emotional and, and spiritual healing. Okay. So, oh, if you'd like my help, <laughs> do you like my help with that? Or if you want to talk to me, about what's going on with you, I offer free breakthrough calls, right? So you go to madelinecorea.com forward slash talk, look at my calendar, and we'll get on the phone for about an hour and we'll get clear on what's going on with you, what's not working in your life. We'll paint a crystal clear vision for how you want it to be instead. And if I can help you get there, I will show you how, okay? So and you, again, you go to madelinecorea.com forward slash talk and schedule a time to talk with me. Okay. So we are going to meditate now with my corporate friends and I hope this serves you. I welcome you to message me or drop some comments. If you have any thoughts, comments, ideas in regards to what we talked about today. And otherwise I will look forward to seeing you in the next video. And until then, I will see you in the gap. Namaste. Be blessed.